Welcome to Freedom Rain Empowerment Devotion Segment. You're live in the upper room with your host, the one, the only, the original, a vessel willing to be used by the Lord, all for the glory of God. Me. Hi. Us. Takesha Jeffrey. I said us because you are watching also, and God is also using you to be a blessing to others, whether it's by praying, whether it's by ministering, whether it's by sharing a testimony, God is using you too. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you all for logging on. As we spend this time in the Word, as we dedicate this time to devotion, talk about prayer, which is a powerful word. Prayer. There's power in prayer. Prayer. Prayer changes things. Prayer. Prayer causes shift to take place. Prayer. Prayer moves mountains. Prayer. Break chains and barriers. Prayer. Remove hurdles. Prayer. There's power in prayer. I want to share with you a scripture, Second Chronicles 7, starting from verse 14. And this is a prophecy. And God is saying in this prophecy through the mouth of Solomon and he says if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven I will forgive their sins I will heal their land now my eyes shall be open, and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there permanently, perpetually. And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my status and my judgments. Then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom, according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel. But if ye turn away and forsake my status and my commandments, which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them, and this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight, and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. And this house which is high shall be an astonishment to every one that passeth by it, so that he shall say, Why hath the Lord done thus? Unto the land, unto this land, and unto this house. And it shall be answered, because they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath he brought all this evil upon them. This is the word of the Lord. Thank be to God. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word that is sharper than a two-edged sword. We thank you for your word that is truth. We thank you for your word that is life. We thank you, Lord, for the power of prayer. And we thank you that we can pray and make our supplication known unto you and you answer in a suitable manner where we call upon your name. We thank you that we can cast our cares upon you because you care for us. We thank you that we can pray continuously, in season, out of season. We thank you that when we pray, pray move mountains. We thank you that when we pray, prayer shift things. We thank you that when we pray, strongholds come down. We thank you that when we pray, things overturn. We thank you that when we pray, things go void and null that is not aligned to your will and your purpose for our life. We thank you, Lord, that prayer moves hurdles, roadblocks, and barriers. We thank you that prayer breaks curses and spells. We thank you that prayer, prayer is powerful. And prayer is the key. Lord, we thank you 
for the passion to pray. We thank you for the zeal to pray. We thank you for the anointing to pray. Lord, we thank you. You said make intercession for our sins. And you said where two touch and agree there you will be. You said ask anything in the name of Jesus and you will do so the Father can be glorified. So you said if my people which are called by my nation humble themselves and pray. And we thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. And we are here to pray. So Lord, we thank you for attending unto our prayer and answering in a suitable manner where we call upon your name. And I pray, Lord, on my will, your will be done on today as we pray. In Jesus' mighty precious name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. And amen. I'm going to give a song rendition. And the name of this song is Whisper a Prayer in the Morning. Amen. Whisper a Prayer at Noon. Whisper a Prayer in the Evening to keep our hearts in tune. Amen. Whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer at noon. Whisper a prayer in the evening to keep our hearts in tune. God and so pray in the morning, go and so pray at noon, go and so pray in the evening to keep our hearts in tune. Jesus may come in the morning, Jesus may come. At noon, Jesus may come in the evening to keep our hearts in tune. So keep your hearts in tune. So keep your hearts in tune let's keep our hearts in tune with god amen as we pray so i love the fact that second chronicles 7 1 says if my people and we are his people god is speaking to us are we listening god is calling us by his name have you answered the call God is saying, if my people which are called by my name shall humble, are you a humble people? Are you a humble nation? Are you a humble generation? God exalt the humble. And God is saying, if we humble ourselves and pray, and seek his face. Matthew 6 to 3 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. A lot of people crying, Peace, mercy, have grace. Are you seeking him while he's yet to be found? Are you seeking he first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Brethren, Matthew 3 2 says, Repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we know that the kingdom of God is not meat, it is not drink, it is righteousness. And God is coming back to judge a world in righteousness. And yes, we see a lot of chaotic things that is happening in the world today where police officers are abusing authority. Where lives are being taken, bloodshed. Those that want justice, but is not fighting for justice in the right way. They think that doing illegal stuff is going to bring justice. They think that setting things on fire will bring justice. They think that yelling to the top of their voice will bring justice. They think that being ignorant and arrogant will bring justice. They think killing one another and destroying the land will bring justice. Brethren, no. Pray. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Not all the violence that is taking place. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in our salvation. Brethren. 
God is asking his people to humble themselves and pray, not riot, not murder one another, not kill one another, not shoot after one another, not burn down the place, not, not stir up rat, not be angry, not hatred, not jealousy, not backbiting, not first fussing and cursing and fighting and all that stuff. He said, humble yourself and pray. There's power in prayer. Prayer moves things. Prayer shifts things. Prayer breaks strongholds. Generational curses. Hallelujah. Prayer heals the sick and the afflicted. Prayer open doors. Hallelujah. Speaking positive. Amen. So, brethren, are you a humble people? Are you a humble nation? Have you heard the call of God or have you rejected and denied it? Have you declined it? God is calling. Will you answer the call today? Will you humble yourself today? Will you seek Him while He's yet to be found? Will you seek He first, His kingdom? And his righteousness in his kingdom there is righteousness, peace and joy. If you want peace and joy and righteousness, seek him. Not riots, not the guns, not fire, not murdering one another and cursing one another, not causing mischief and trouble. Amen. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. If you seek ye first this kingdom, all that you will find in his kingdom and more. And whatever it is you desire, peace, justice, it will be added unto you. There's a right and a wrong way of doing things. And sometimes, people, they ask for justice. And it's either it's not there because... They are acting in the wrong way or they are taking things in their own hand or and doing things in their own manner rather than doing it the way God has us to do it. And I want you to take today and sit down and ask yourself, am I doing what God asked him to do or am I doing what I want to do? Have I answered the call? Have I humbled myself as I pray and seek his face? Have I turned from my wicked ways? Many of you are saying, well, what is wicked ways? We live in a generation that is calling evil good and good evil. But I'm here to let you know that good will never be evil and evil will never be good. Good is good and evil is evil. It is what it is. And no one can change that. And evil and wicked ways are considered murdering, lying, stealing, gossiping, backbiting, witchcraft, divination, secrecy, sorcery, soothsaying, racism, malice, hatred, anger, idolatry, witchcraft, sorcery, necromancy, you just name it, voodoo partition, you just name it, casting spell and curses upon people, all those things are wicked ways. Abortion, homosexuality. Robbing, fighting, cursing, lying, gossiping, intimidating, manipulating, all those things are considered wicked ways. And God is saying if my people will turn from their wicked ways, that is when he's going to hear us from heaven. Then, only then he's going to hear from heaven, forgive the sin and heal the land. So, brethren, why make things worse by being a mimicker, by being a copycat, by doing what other people do, instead of doing the right thing to do? What is the right thing? The answer is in the Word of God. And the Word of God says, Humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, and turn from our wicked ways. Then he's going to hear from heaven. Then he's going to forgive us, and then he's going to heal our land. And 
And I pray you, brothers and sisters, will take heed to the word of God so that your land can be healed. Whatever the situation is, can be healed. There's power in prayer. There's healing in prayer. There's breakthrough in prayer. We serve a God that answers prayer. And that's the answer. Not riots. Not murdering one another. Not backbiting. Not astral projecting. Not bickering. Not cursing, fussing, fighting. Not adultery, fornication, homosexuality, racism, pride. All those. No. Th that's not the answer. Those things come to kill, steal, and destroy. But these come that we may have life and life more abundantly. And we serve a merciful and compassionate God. Why take his mercy and compassion and grace for granted? He simply asks us to turn away from our wicked ways. So to turn away from our wicked ways is to turn from those things that is not Christ-like and turn towards God, who is righteous, who is holy. Brethren, If you desire God to answer your prayer, you have to do those things. You can't do one without the other. You have to humble yourself, pray, seek his face, turn from your wicked ways. Then he's going to hear from heaven. Then he's going to forgive us and then he's going to heal your land. And it says, now his eyes shall be open and his ears shall attend unto the prayer in that place. So if you want God to attend unto the prayer in your place, do what he's asking or commissioning or prophesy for you to do. The reason why prayers have not been heard in some places is because of disobedience, because of rebellion. But we, we do serve a God that answer prayer. And if we want God to do his part, we got to do our part too. We know that the battle is not ours, it belongs to God. But we got to fight this fight of faith on our knees. He teach our hand to war and our fingers to fight. Not to murder, not to kill, not to cause manslaughter, not to thief and rob and abuse and assault. No. And God is calling his people to repentance. I pray you, my brothers and sisters, will take heed to the word of God. You will humble yourself, pray if you have gone after other gods and you feel like all these things is happening because you have gone after other gods and you know that you need to do the right thing, then do the right thing and turn away from those other gods and worship the true and living God who sit upon the throne. Turn from those wicked ways so that the Lord can hear from heaven, forgive your sins and heal your land. No, we're not saying abusing authority is right. But we know that there's a right and a wrong way in doing things. Choose to do it the right way. The Bible says repay evil with good and not evil with evil. So if it is that the officers shoot someone or murder someone, ask why was that person murdered or shoot? If it is that they did a crime, the Bible said the wage of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now we know that the officers should not have shoot. It have a right and wrong way in doing things. They could have either arrest the guys and take them down to the prison cell and then take them to court and allow the judge to... Do what the judge do. Amen. Right? We know that the officer's job is to protect and to serve. Yes? Not to take advantage of authority. But we know sometimes they can get biggie in the head and go overboard. But sometimes they have to do things to bring things in alignment and in control, under control. Because of the attitude and the arrogance of people. Have you all ever wondered that the reason why things happen is because of the way people choose to live and, and the things that they choose to do that is not right in the eyes of God? 
and then they have to suffer or pay the consequences for it. So if these men were bandits and they went breaking into someone's house and they stole stuff and they got shot for that, I don't see why riots should be taking place all over the place. Something like that. The police, they will, I'm not saying that they were right for shooting and killing these three men. They should not they they should not have done what they have done and there was a better way and a right way of doing things. But that doesn't give the residents and the people right to cause torture to the other people that is in the land or in the place, right? Or disrupt their peace, right? As I said, prayer changes things. Prayer moves mountains, hurdles and barrier. There's a right and wrong way in doing things, and I believe the right way is praying. Amen? Yes, we hear people say, pray until, some, until something happens. Some of you saying, well, I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying, and nothing happening. Are you, are you praying selfishly, or are you praying in the will of God? We got to ask ourselves these questions. Amen? I just pray you, brothers and sisters, we'll just take heed to the word of God. The Bible says, my people are perished for the lack of knowledge. There's a lot of knowledge in the word of God, but a lot of people, they gain worldly knowledge and they go off the worldly knowledge and we're going off the knowledge of God. And the knowledge of the world caused them to get into destruction or cause them to perish or be destroyed. But it's not God's desire for us to be destroyed. It's his desire for us to come to repentance. And I pray, brethren, that you will read your Bible, gain some knowledge, repent, so that you won't perish, but you will have everlasting life. I pray that you will do the right thing. And stop doing the wrong things. I pray instead of getting arrogant and hasty. And want to pick up gun and fight and kill and murder. You will turn to praying. Stop the violence. Love one another. And stop killing one another. He has given us a new commandment. He said, love one another even as I love you. Love you one another. Learn to love one another, brethren. Amen? Learn to love one another. I love you all so much in Jesus. And Jesus love you all too. And I just pray that you all take heed to the word of God. Because God is calling his people by his name. And he's asking for you all to humble yourself. Pray. Seek his face. Turn from the wicked ways. And this is all of us. Humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, turn from our wicked ways. Then he's going to hear from heaven. Then he's going to forgive us. And then he's going to heal our land. Amen. I love you all so much in Jesus. And Jesus love you all too. And I pray that you all blessed by this devotion on today. And God bless each and every one of you. Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your truth. We thank you, Lord. And I pray, Father, that your people will take heed to the word of God and they will do what it is you are asking us to do in your word, Father, as you call us by your name. I pray that we all will humble, pray, seek your face, turn from our wicked ways so you can hear from heaven, forgive us sin and heal our land. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for attending unto the praying all land and opening your eyes unto us, O God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask that your will be done and not ours. In the name of Jesus, and uh, we ask that you hear humble cry and do not pass us by when you are blessed. Bless us well. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, to God, our strength and our redeemer. And those who do not know how to pray, we ask that you teach them how to pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, just as you taught the disciples how to pray. I pray that you teach their hand how to war in the right way and the fingers how to fight in the right way, Lord, not in the violent way, but in the right way. Hallelujah! That Jesus, oh God, has taught the disciples how to pray and fight and war with their hands and their fingers. Father, we just thank you, and we love you, and we bless your name on today. In Jesus' mighty, precious name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. I love you all so much, and Jesus, Jesus, love you all too. Please tag and share and invite so someone can be encouraged on today. Amen? Someone need this word. Amen? Hallelujah. Again, you are live in the upper room with your host, the one, the only, the original of Esther, willing to be used by the Lord, all for the glory of God, to Keisha Jeffrey. And you are tuning in live at Freedom Rain Empowerment for Jesus Christ, Healing the Universe, and the Five Core Ministry unto the Lord. As it is not my ministry, it's a ministry unto the Lord. And we just had a devotional segment talking about prayer. And I just want to let you know that prayer changes things. Amen? God bless you. Until then, Shabbat Shalom. Goodbye.
don't forget to share. May the Lord be with you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. And may he give you peace. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.